Hello everyone. In the following couple of minutes we would like to give you a short summary on abbreviated MRI of the liver. After a brief introduction presenting strategies and potential indications, this talk will focus on abbreviated MRI in the context of HCC surveillance. Abbreviated magnetic resonance imaging, also known as AMRI or AMRI, relates to the acquisition of only a limited number of selected sequences tailored to a specific disease. A defining hallmark of these protocols further is that they may be completed in a scanner time of approximately 10 minutes or less. Main motivations for implementing this strategy in clinical routine is the reduction not only of scanner time but also interpretation time. This is further associated with a simplification of workflow, an improvement of patient comfort and a reduction of imaging costs. To sum up, abbreviated MRI aims towards reduction of exam complexity while maintaining a high diagnostic sensitivity. As you all know, a full MRI of the liver typically includes a wide range of sequences and a protocol like this can easily take 30 to 40 minutes in clinical routine. For abbreviated MRI of the liver, three general approaches have been developed and are being studied in the literature, and we will have a closer look at those strategies right now. The first and most straightforward approach is the so-called non-contrast armory strategy. Up to three sequences are acquired, including a T1-weighted sequence with or without in and opposed phased imaging and a T2-weighted sequence followed by diffusion-weighted imaging. Major advantages of the non-contrast AMRI protocol relate to the omission of injecting a gadolinium-based contrast agent. Furthermore, there is no need for acquisition timing and sequences may be repeated easily in case of artifacts. On the downside, interpretation relies solely on unenhanced images, which tend to have a relatively low CNR. Diffusion-weighted imaging can be technically challenging and may suffer from a variety of artifacts. Further, lesions may be iso-intense to the liver or obscured and therefore difficult to visualize on non-contrast emery protocols. The second approach is the so-called dynamic emery strategy, which relates to the injection of an extracellular contrast agent and the acquisition of a contrast dynamic only, including a pre-contrast T1-weighted sequence as baseline for enhancement. This approach has unique advantages as diagnostic imaging features for definitive diagnosis of HCC may be assessed. Furthermore, it allows diagnosis of tumor in vain and is more cost-effective compared with the use of a hepatobiliary contrast agent. On the downside, contrast injection is required. Adequate timing of the contrast dynamic is essential, as well as a high quality of the arterial phase. Another disadvantage is the lack of non-contrast sequences, which may provide ancillary imaging features. The third strategy is called hepatobiliary phase AMRI and relates to the injection of the hepatobiliary specific contrast agent cadoxetate sodium. The protocol consists of a T2-weighted sequence and T1-weighted images in the hepatobiliary phase. Of note, some authors also include diffusion-weighted imaging in this protocol, however, there isn't a clear consensus on whether DWI should be a part of hepatobiliary phase AMRI or not. Contrast injection may be performed by hand, for example with a patient in the waiting room. This simplifies the workflow significantly. Hepatobiliary phase images have a very high contrast to noise ratio and they may be repeated easily in case of artifacts. Interpretation and reporting may be performed using a simple scoring system based on ultrasound lyrids. On the downside, hepatobiliary phase AMRI is the most expensive AMRI approach. Contrast uptake in the hepatobiliary phase and therefore lesion detection may be limited, especially in patients with advanced cirrhosis. With regards to HCC, tumor detection depends on the very early changes during hepatocarcinogenesis before exhibiting arterial phase enhancement or portal venous washout. There is a great potential for performing abbreviated MRI of the liver. However, most evidence is currently available in the context of HCC surveillance which we will now focus on in the second part of this talk. 
the cost effectiveness of full MRI using a hepatobiliary contrast agent versus ultrasound for HCC surveillance has been shown in several studies, as for example in this prospective HCC surveillance cohort including more than 10,000 patients. Despite the higher imaging costs, MRI was superior with a cost effectiveness threshold of $20,000 per quality adjusted life years. This cost utility analysis from the United States compared seven strategies for surveillance and diagnosis of HCC, taking into account technically inadequate examinations and patient compliance. Surveillance and diagnosis with CT followed by complete MRI for inadequate surveillance was the most cost effective strategy when compliance was optimal. In a conservative compliance scenario, however, abbreviated MRI followed by CT for inadequate surveillance or complete MRI for positive surveillance was most cost effective. What about interreader agreement for abbreviated MRI in HCC detection? This systematic review and meta-analysis included eight studies with more than 1,000 patients. Abbreviated MRI for detecting HCC showed substantial interreader agreement across all examined protocols, as seen in this figure on the right. However, abbreviated MRI using only diffusion-weighted imaging had a relatively lower interreader agreement. The authors therefore conclude that dynamic or hepatobiliary phase abbreviated MRI may be more reliable than non-contrast abbreviated MRI using only diffusion-weighted imaging. In this systematic review and meta-analysis, it was shown that abbreviated MRI has a high and among different protocols comparable sensitivity and specificity for HCC screening, with a sensitivity for detection depending on tumor size, but being substantially higher than for ultrasound. The authors conclude that abbreviated MRI is an attractive alternative to ultrasound and full MRI for HCC screening and that in this context the non-contrast strategy may be the ideal approach due to its non-invasiveness and lower costs. In the context of HCC surveillance, this meta-analysis, including more than 1,800 patients, similarly showed that surveillance MRI using different protocols has a very good sensitivity and specificity for tumor detection, particularly for very early stage HCC. At subgroup analysis, abbreviated MRI had a diagnostic performance comparable to that of full MRI with a pool sensitivity of 87 versus 84 percent and an equal specificity of 94 percent. Finally, in this prospective study of high-risk patients undergoing HCC surveillance by gadoxetic acid enhanced MRI and ultrasound, abbreviated MRI had a significantly higher sensitivity for tumor detection. Furthermore, a sequential approach of full MRI followed by abbreviated MRI showed the highest diagnostic accuracy when compared with abbreviated MRI or ultrasound only. Of note, in this study, image quality was reported as suboptimal in nearly one-third of cases with ultrasound-based surveillance, but only in approximately 10% of MRI cases. In conclusion, abbreviated MRI protocols consist of very few sequences with a high diagnostic potential. Three major strategies are currently being discussed in the literature, each with specific advantages and disadvantages. Overall results regarding performance are promising. However, they are based mostly on retrospective study designs with most evidence currently available in the context of HCC surveillance. The best protocol for abbreviated MRI still needs to be defined and will most likely not be a one-fits-all strategy, but rather a protocol tailored to the target population. In this context, large prospective studies are highly warranted to gain further evidence. Thank you very much for your interest in our video. In case of questions, feel free to contact us.